Good morning, Jock. So you've been here <coughs> once or twice before, <laughs> understand the drill. Um, if you give us a brief outline of your submission and uh, perhaps take some questions would probably be the way to go. Thank you. Um, I included a uh, so to do with the hockey facility that we're proposing at Sports Park Hawke's Bay. I included some the rationale behind that or a summary, the, summary of the rationale behind that in the submission. So I won't... Um, talk to that further other than to say it's our strong view that the region needs a third turf. There are 2,200 hockey players in Hawke's Bay and Hockey New Zealand would suggest that with that sort of number we should have at least three turfs, in, in fact we should have more than three turfs. They, they say you should have a maximum of 650 players per turf, we have 1,100. So the requirement for a third turf is, is a key driver behind it. Um, the other thing of course which we've discussed previously is the opportunity for us to have, for Hawke's Bay to host an international tournament at that venue. As far as that is concerned, there's really, I suppose, a three-way conversation going on, and um, the parties to that conversation are ourselves, that's a sports park, and our role in that is to provide, a, provide the venue. So we're talking about a venue which has the cap capability of ho hosting an internationally sanctioned women's tournament. The other key party to that is, is, of course, Hockey New Zealand, and Hockey New Zealand's role in the mix is securing the overseas tournament and running the, running the event. It, sorry, securing the overseas teams and running the event itself. Um, and the third uh, component to it are the parties engaged in underwriting the event. So that's the financial considerations for hosting the event itself. Uh, that's the marketing around it, and just in respect to that, it is our intention to make this much more than just a hockey tournament. Um, we want it to be an event that will showcase Hawke's Bay, especially given some of the tele television audiences that accrue from, from such an event. The things that are requiring confirmation at this point are, um, comp and all of which we're, we're a long way down the track on and fairly confident of, I should say, but uh, just for your information, the, things that, that the key things that require confirmation in hosting the event are confirmation of, of the participating nations, Actually, we're in a very good space for that at the moment because um, you know the Black Sticks are doing very well and, and uh, they did well at the Olympics and continue to do so. So that, that's a, um, a strong thing in our favour as far as attracting international teams is concerned. Uh, the second key component is our ability to build the facility for the budgeted costs. Now, we are in the process of updating the numbers that we used when we spoke to you last year and we remain confident of being able to do that. Um, Part and parcel of that is our ability to raise the funds to build it. Uh, we said to you um, last year when we were talking about it, we expected the full facility to cost about $3.5 million. That still remains about the figure that we're looking at. Um, we have uh, nearly, subject of course to um, Regional Council confirming its position, we have nearly all of that funding in place, so we're, we're confident about that part of it. The two other key things are the ability to run a viable event, in other words, uh, an event that's going to be uh, at least financially neutral to run, uh, and that is logistically viable, and our ability to secure it for a good length of time. So we, like you, are not proposing that we uh, spend additional money making an international facility for something that's only going to be here for a year or so. We want it to be long term. Uh, but the, the th as I say, the sort of a key thing I do want to communicate is we do want this to be a stunning event for Hawke's Bay. We don't just want it to be an event where um, six or eight nations turn up, do their thing and go away again. We want it to be an event that is a platform to to communicate what Hawke's Bay is about to the rest of the world and certainly as far as the um, people who physically attend it is concerned. By the rest of the world I mean that um, our anticipation would be that we have participating nations from Europe, uh, from Asia, from South America and Australia, and some of those are key markets as far as New Zealand's exports are concerned. As I say, we are we are optimistic about this, but but uh, in the event that we one of those things doesn't come together as we would like it, uh, we do have a Plan B, if you like, and and the Plan B in, in, is that we don't do an international hockey facility; it's just a domestic facility. Uh, and also part of the Plan B, which we've actually first commenced work on just over a year ago, is an aquatic facility for the region. Now that's 
uh, not a swimming pool, but it is an outdoor aquatic facility primarily for the use of the canoe polo fraternity. Now, I'm not sure if councillors are aware, but there's about a 1,000 canoe polo players in Hawke's Bay, so there's a fair few of them. They don't currently have a venue, um, so they're one that um, we were in contact with uh, just over a year ago now, and we have done a fair bit of feasibility on that too. So I'm just giving you that last piece of information, actually, just so you're, for your information at the moment. Um, as I say, our, our primary goal is the hockey facility, as I've described, but it's really just to demonstrate to you that there are other... Uh, there is another key option that we would um, pursue if that didn't come off. Uh, what I'd like to suggest, uh, in some discussion with the council, um, my request to you is that, um, I, I said actually in my submission paper that I'd give you our full business case. Actually, I do have that, but I would uh, prefer not to uh, provide that just at this time. Um, in, in discussion with council, my understanding is this sort of two key further opportunities to present that to you. One is in about a month's time at the uh, corporate and strategy meeting, I think it is, and the other is on the 4th of September at the same meeting. Uh, my preference would be to give you the, the full picture at that stage and formally ask for your confirmation for us to proceed with that. The, um, by that stage, we would be presenting to you and saying, uh, these are the participating nations, this is what it's going to cost, and incidentally the plans are going out for cost tender shortly. Uh, this is where our funding is coming from, and in addition to your own funding. Uh, this is the operational situation as far as hockey is concerned generally, but as far as the viability of the event is concerned. And this is the length of tenure that we have secured with the participating nations. So, so those are the four key things, as I say, which we are a long way down the track on, but which I will be giving you finality on in, at your 4th of September corporate and strategy meeting. So I guess at this point it's really just it's an update for you and um, and an opportunity to, to ask any questions you might have. Thank you. Questions, Councillor Rose. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jock. I, I under, this is the blue turf we're talking about, isn't it? Now, I, I understand using the blue turf for international games and um, Tier 1 games, but obviously that's not going to occur every week. Is a sports park... Um, ordinary games to be played on that turf so that the turf is used on a weekly basis or would it be simply set aside for um, international or, or national games? Oh no, no absolutely it's pri primary use is, is local and um, you know if you think the tournament takes place over 10 days or two weeks of a year it means 95 percent of its use is, is local use. As far as the turf is concerned um, there's a bit of Misinformation is not the right word, but the turf is the same. It, it, it's, it happens to be blue. It could be green, pink, or anything. It doesn't. Yeah. 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 Lighting, yeah. I understand. Can, can I just ask a quick question? There are other questions. Um, you've come here today. Obviously, we we have a, a resolution of council, which, uh, from memory, involved a whole lot of other parties um, being part of the discussion and coming back with what hockey should look like in Hawke's Bay. How far down the track are the discussions with the likes of the um, Artificial Turf Committee, what are they called, um, yeah. Hawke's Bay Hockey, yeah. those guys? Are they are they in the conversation at this stage or do you have to finalise the international stuff before you then start communicating with them? Napier City Council as an example. Um, uh, yeah, a bit of both. Uh, as far as Hawke's Bay Hockey is concerned, we have had reasonable discussion with them and that's because um, it's quite a detailed relationship we need to have with them. They're the primary users of the turf, uh, so we need to be clear about the arrangements between us and them. Um, actually, we're quite a long way down the track on that. In fact, there's a draft agreement between us and them with our solicitors at the moment to, um, to button that down, so that's a fair way down the track. Um, as far as Napier City and the Artificial Services Trust are concerned, the, uh, in, in particular probably the Artificial Services Trust, I've, uh, I've had a couple of meetings with Neil and a cup of coffee with him really, but um, we don't feel, uh, and, and their key thing, I think, as communicated to the council last time we were here, was that uh, was to say they would support it, but um, if it was viable and if it was longer, long, long term, um, we're not in a position to say to them yet, uh, here's the length of tenure for the event and here's the viability of it. We, we're confident of both those things, but we're not in a position to communicate that yet. So when we are, we'll see both those parties by them at Artificial Services in Napier City. No. Chairman, my question related to the statement from Mr McKenzie that we need a third turf. 
My understanding is that Napier City have on their annual plan the facility for a third turf, so we're talking here of the fourth turf. Um, can you, perhaps you can update me that they've, they've, they've withdrawn that decision to build a third turf, have they? Yeah, no, I, I, uh, look, my understanding too is that, that it, the third turf, or actually it would probably be a fourth turf at the time, is a fair way down the track as far as Napier City is concerned. I think there's, um, it was part of the long-term development for Park Island, but um, a great many of those facilities are, are part of a robust long-term plan, but I think, for example, funding for that isn't in place yet at Park Island. That was the bell, not a phone ringing. Sorry, thank you, uh, John. Thank you. Ten minutes are up. Um, you give us a bit of bit of uh, information to digest as we debate this later in the in the hearing. So, thank you. Thank you.